This is Zach Oliarnik, CS275, assignment A2, the SEPTA tracker. What you're looking at right here is the layout of my main.xml. You can see I've got two spinners, uh, the source station and the destination station, a search button, a currently hidden map button, and a list which will populate all of the trains. The map.xml is just a fragment where the map will be displayed whenever I get there. And the last thing for layout is an arrays.xml into which I put all of the stations of the CSV file that was provided. Uh, I decided to hard code these so I wouldn't have to deal with hyperlinking to the CSV file and the stations probably won't be changing anytime soon so I thought it was okay to hard code all of those in and then just draw from them to populate the spinners. So in my main activity uh, we've got some global variables up here they just help um, so it's easier than having to pass between all of the different functions and stuff I've got going on. My main on create starts with my two buttons, the search button and the map button. The search button gets all the stations out of the spinner. I put in some error checking if source and destination are the same, do nothing. Otherwise, call my first async task to get the trains based on the stations that they put in. The map button generates the map of the train's last known locations, which would be the last station that they just left. Uh, you can see here that I had to do some research on my own to find out how to pass a parameter like my train array into a new intent. So whenever you click a map button, it'll shoot off to map.java and do that. Okay, my first async task gets all of the trains based on the two stations that they input. First we had to URL encode the um, text of the spinner that they selected, go to one of the links that was provided to us, do all the same JSON stuff as before, clear both of my arrays so they don't just keep growing every time you click the button, and then go get the things that the assignment asks for, the train number, the departure time from its last station, or no, the departure time from the station that the user selected and the arrival time at the other station that the user selected. Adding this train to my train's array list and adding the departure and arrival times to the times array list. Uh, whenever that finishes, in the post execute, we go to populate. Populate is right here below. It populates the list of matching trains utilizing the list view subtext option and a hash table to do all of the storage. Uh, as you can see, that code was shamelessly stolen from somebody on Stack Overflow. So, we use the hash table to populate everything, create our own simple adapter, go in, again, clear the list view, um, apply the adapter, and set both the map button and the list view to visible. I chose to link the map button to the list view so that you could only click the map button and generate a map if there was stuff in the list view so you would know which trains you were looking at. Otherwise it would be a blank map and it wouldn't really help you. Uh, one of the last things that I do in my main activity is this display additional information about the train on the long click. Uh, all that that does is cause my second async task to get the last train. What that does is it goes to the second uh, URL link that was provided, the individual trains link, and then it goes and it parses that JSON response looking for the last stop that it was visited. I do this by looking to see the actual departure time. If the actual departure time is equal to NA, that's just the string that they put in to show that it hasn't been there yet, um, the train has not reached that station yet. So you either want to get the station before it, or if that's the first station, you know the train hasn't started its route yet. So if there was something before it, it would hit the else, populate station, um, last stop, schedule time, and actual time with that data. And then whenever it came out in the post execute, it would pass those into a toast. That's how I'm displaying those things, last stop, schedule time, and actual time in that toast. So the rest of this was the auto-generated code for the options menu. Whenever you click the map button, it triggers map.java. Again, some more global variables up here at the top. Passing my train list in from the main activity. This is the code that you need to access, um, retrieve what was passed in. 
and then we immediately start a new async task to get the last station, uh, which is what's plotted on the map. So we pass our trains array list into there. This is a little bit wonky here. Um, the train array came in here. Trains up here is an array list, but whenever you pass something into an async task, it becomes an array itself. So in order to access what we want, we want to do train sub zero to access the array list itself and then dot size on that. Um, and then as we're looking for the original train, it's train sub zero dot get I to get the specific train. Um, right here we've defined the map, which is just a necessary step to get the map to display. And then we do a for loop. So for every train that was populated in our list before, we try to go there, find what the last stop is, basically using the same code as we did on the other uh, activity to find if it's not been to a station yet, or if we do have a station, then we can get that. Once we come out of that, if last stop is still null, um, we do nothing because the train has not left the station yet. However, if we do have a last stop, we turn it into a latitude and longitude point by calling this routine, get location from address, and then concatenating last stop with Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and then adding that to a station list. Whenever we come into the on post execute there is where we actually add the markers to the map. Um, that gets kind of involved too because we're doing that for every marker that isn't null. Add it, add the station name, um, URL encoded, and then geocoded to get the latitude and longitude. That's what this parameter ends up being. And then the number of the train, which is what all of that nonsense is. Then we add that specific marker to a markers array, which the next thing we do is decide how to display the map. If the markers array size is less than two, so if there's only one train that we're looking at, we animate the camera so that it is centered on that marker. Otherwise, we use this procedure down here, also taken from Stack Overflow, to average the locations of all of the markers and center the camera at their center. So that's very cool. Uh, the last thing that we do is this get location from address routine, which is the geocoding thing. It's actually pretty cool that you can just enter a string and get a latitude and longitude back. So this again was all taken care of for me just by searching for something that did this. Um, so when you come back, you've got your latitude longitude, which you can send out and be done with it. So I'm going to run this project and show you that everything works. As we launch, we have the two things. Again, if you try and do search when the locations are the same, nothing happens. Otherwise, you can put in something like the airport terminal, search, the map button appeared, and the trains list, uh, capped off at 20 trains, comes into there. Now, if we start at the top and do long presses, we can see all of the extra information that it asked for in that toast. Very cool. Eventually, we'll get to one that the train has not left yet, so we will see that it comes up as blank because that departure time is 12.34 and my system clock says it's 11.08 right now. So that train is not on the rails yet. But if I say map, I should be able to generate the three that are. So we'll be looking for numbers 3425, 427, and 3429. Alright, so we've got three markers. That's good. And if you do the click on the marker, you can see that was train 427. This one here is 3425. And this one was 3429. So we successfully generated the three trains that we thought we were going to. Uh, I'm just going to show you one more example trying to find one that only has one train. You see, obviously, the search button uh, reset itself. Okay, that's got one. Okay, this one only has one train on the rails between these two destinations. So if I hit map here, it should center that specific train on the very center. And you can see there that um, 
that train station is actually marked on the map so we were able to pull that up directly 20, uh, 234 so everything's pretty good uh, just to show you if I go back to 30th Street Station and hit search the button will disappear so that I can't uh, access the map anymore and the list view is hidden so it's essentially cleared also okay so uh, I believe that that fulfills all the requirements of the assignment I have the user able to select their stations uh, generate the list view of trains that does uh, fulfills their requirements and long pressing on them give you the additional information when it's available and clicking the map plots those points on the map uh, this was a pretty fun assignment I had a whole lot of trouble doing stuff with my AVDs for some reason they decided to cut out on me this is actually AVD Mark IV you can see up here because the rest of them um, had trouble basically every time I turned my computer off I needed to create a new AVD to get it to run I'm not really sure why that is but uh, this is the last assignment that we have to do that requires Android so I think that I should be okay now that I'm over this hurdle um, everything else worked pretty well I found help for some of the code on Stack Overflow but the rest of it followed pretty easily and I think it's very smooth as an application um, it was a good experience once again this was Zach Oliarnik and thank you